Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. It's been said that sometimes you must leave home to understand home. I had to leave physics where I began in June 1970 in Onicha, Nigeria. Namely, the ordinary level of physics of the General Certificate of Education of the University of London, England, as well as the advanced level of physics of the School Certificate of the West African Examination Council of Lagos, Nigeria. After January 15, 1970, the day the Nigeria Biafra War was over, Growing up as a 15-year-old in my ancestral hometown of Onicha, Nigeria, my knowledge of physics in 1970 was limited to the 1,118-page textbook that was titled Advanced Level Physics. That physics textbook was written by Michael Nelkon and Philip Parker. Both co-authors were physics teachers for the Advanced Level General Certificate of Education of the University of London, England. Advanced Level Physics was the most popular physics textbooks in British Commonwealth and was popular from India to Africa. I left physics through calculus. I left physics taking with me the second law of motion that I encoded into my system of COP9 coupled nonlinear time dependent state of the art and never before seen partial differential equations of the modern calculus. Those partial differential equations and my mathematical and experimental discoveries of how to discretize and solve them across my new internet that is my new supercomputer and my new computer was the cover story of top mathematics publications such as the May 1990 issue of the Siam News. The Siam News is the bi-monthly news journal of the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics that is the top society for research mathematicians. As a polymath, a set of laws of physics was the lowest common denominator in the theories and experiments that I conducted during the 16 years onward of June 20, 1974, that was the first day that I programmed the sequential processing supercomputer that was at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Cavallis, Oregon, United States. In textbooks on computational physics, where there are laws of physics, that we are used to solve problems. There are systems of partial differential equations of calculus that encoded those laws of physics. Where there are partial differential equations of calculus to be solved on supercomputers, there are large scale systems of equations of algebra that approximated those systems of equations of calculus. Where there are large-scale algebraic equations 
to be massively solved in parallel. There must be a set of floating point arithmetical operations that solves those equations. For that reason, it made the news headlines that I experimentally discovered the precursor to the massively parallel processing supercomputer of today and that I invented that technology on the 4th of July, 1989, in Los, Al and in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. I experimentally discovered that where there are humongous sets of floating point arithmetical operations that takes 30,000 years of time to solution on only one isolated processor that was not a member of an ensemble of processors, that there should be a new internet that is a new global network of processors or a new global network of as many identical computers. That new internet is a new supercomputer and a new computer that takes just one day of time to solution to solve what otherwise will take 30,000 years to solve. The reason the 12-year-old is doing a school report on the contributions of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer is that I experimentally discovered how to massively parallel process and how to do so across a new internet. The reason my experimental discovery of the massively parallel processing supercomputer was written in major US newspapers was that my discovery opened the door for speeding up 30,000 years of time to solution on one computer that computed with only one processor to just one day of time to solution on one supercomputer that simultaneously computed across a tightly coupled ensemble of 10 million processors. My technological quest for the fastest supercomputer that began on June 20, 1974 in Covalis, Oregon, United States was for the shortest time to the solutions for the grand challenge problems of the massively parallel processing supercomputer that is a new internet and a new computer de facto. My quest was for the shortest time to solution of the most excruciatingly detailed general circulation modeling that must be used to foresee otherwise unforeseeable climate changes. The following are six facts about my scientific quest for how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. That scientific quest was for the Philip M. Aguale formula that I experimentally discovered on the 4th of July, 1989, and that United States President Bill Clinton reconfirmed in his White House speech of August 26, 2000. First, I began programming supercomputers at age 19. Second, I have been supercomputing since June 20, 1974. Third, I programmed supercomputers from the sequential processing supercomputer that was at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. 
to the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built in the 1980s that was in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States is to the modern supercomputer what Abuja is to modern Nigeria. Fourth, when I began programming supercomputers, there was no computer that I know of in sub-Saharan Africa. Fifth, when I began programming supercomputers, the word supercomputer had not entered into any dictionary. Sixth, when I began programming supercomputers, President Richard Nixon was living in the White House. Today, there is a computer in almost every White House in the United States and beyond. By the 1940s definition, and to some extent, we are all computer scientists. But not all of us can be listed by Google in the top 10 contributors to the development of the computer. Only one person experimentally discovered how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and super. My contribution to the development of the fastest computer is that I experimentally discovered that parallel process makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest and super, namely the Philip M. Aguale supercomputer formula for processing across processors. And that experimental discovery made the news headlines in 1989. In the 1970s and 80s, I struggled to write about my experimental discoveries that pertained to how to massively parallel process initial boundary value problems of calculus that arose in extreme scaled computational physics. My scientific maturity grew across the decades of the 1970s and 80s. For that reason, my clarity became sharper with distance in time and space. That distance made the massively parallel process in supercomputer once again strange but as familiar as the sequential processing computer. Insightful and brilliant lecture.